I'm checking um, around underneath the eyes, looking for signs of xanthelasma that may indicate cholesterol deposits. I'm having a look uh, at the lower, pulling down the lower lids and having a look at the conjunctiva to check for signs of anemia. I'm having a look around the pupil of the eye to look for a corneal arcus to check for signs of possible hyperlipidemia. Here I'm looking for a raised uh, pulsation from the internal jugular vein. If that was raised, that would come up from behind the clavicle, up through the sternodmastoid muscle, up behind the ear. And next I'm going to have a look at the hair distribution on the lower limbs. Um, lack of hair distribution on the lower limbs uh, may indicate uh, vascular disease. Also having a look at the condition of the lower limbs to have a look for things like cellulitis or varicose veins or leg ulcers. Hello, my name is Helen Ward and I'm Principal Lecturer at London South Bank University on the Advanced Nurse Practitioner Programs and Non-Medical Prescribing Programs. Today I'm going to talk you through physical examination of the cardiovascular system. This will include general inspection of the patient, it will include physical examination of the peripheral vascular system and then physical examination of the cardiac system. The patient has just arrived and I've asked him to get uh, onto the bed for me so I can perform the physical examination. It's very important when you're doing a physical examination of the cardiovascular system to ensure that you've got a private in environment and that the room is quite quiet for the patient. It's also important that the patient is lying on the couch in the supine position at an angle of 30 to 45 degrees. Hello Daniel, I'm going to do a physical examination of your cardiovascular system uh, today and I wonder if that's okay with you. That's fine, thank you. Okay, would you mind just removing your top for me please? Yep. And I'm going to wash my hands. Okay. That's it. Put it on the chair for you. Okay, all right. Now the first thing I'm going to do is have a look um, at Daniel's face. I'm going to have a look for any obvious signs of, of distress. I'm checking um, around underneath the eyes looking for signs of xanthelasma that may indicate cholesterol deposits. I'm having a look uh, at the lower, pulling down the lower lids and having a look at the conjunctiva to check for signs of anemia. I'm having a look around the pupil of the eye to look for a corneal arcus to check for signs of possible hyperlipidemia. Now I'm going to move on to the mouth. I'm having a look around the lips. I'm checking to see if there's any signs of central cyanosis. I'm looking at the corner of the mouth to check for any cracking that may indicate uh, iron deficiency anemia or vi vitamin B deficiency. If you could just open your mouth for me please Daniel. I'm just going to have a look inside Daniel's mouth looking for uh, the general condition of the oral hygiene to check for signs of that could indicate bacterial endocarditis. And then I'm going to just ask you to stick, stick your tongue out for me, please. And I'm just checking the tongue for signs of dehydration. Now I'm going to move on to the hands. If you'd just like to hold your hands out for me, Daniel, please. First of all, I'm going to check for temperature. They're nice and warm. I'm going to check for capillary refill. That's nice and brisk. If you could put your fingers together for me, Please, Daniel, like that. I'm looking to check for, for finger clubbing. You should see a nice diamond shape um, at the base of the fingernails there. Clubbing will occur in chronic uh, respiratory or cardiac disease. Just like to turn your hands over for me, please. Daniel, I'm having a look now in the creases of the palms to check for any paleness again that may indicate anemia. Now I'm going to move on to the assessment of the peripheral vascular system, but first of all I'm going to measure the JVP. Daniel, would you just like to turn your head over to the left for me please? Here I'm looking for a raised uh, pulsation from the internal jugular vein. If that was raised, that would come up from behind the clavicle, up through the sternodmastoid muscle, up behind the ear. You need to have a look 
in a triangle round about uh, uh, this place here um, and then you need to have a look for an obvious pulsation within the sternomastoid muscle here. You can see that quite clearly, that will be the carotid pulse. Now I want to have a look, in some people you can see quite clearly distension of the external jugular vein. If the internal jugular vein was raised or the JVP was raised, it would come up here. Um, some people measure it but it's not usually measured anymore. Anything above two centimetres is regarded as a raised JVP and a raised JVP would be visible in uh, patients with right-sided heart failure or portal hypertension. Now we're going to check the pulses. We're going to check the pulses for rate, rhythm and density. First of all I'm going to check the carotid pulse one at a time. Okay, once I've checked the carotid pulse I'm going to listen at the carotid pulses with the bell of the stethoscope for any carotid breweries. Next I'm going to check the radial pulses. And I'm going to check the brachial pulses. Now I'm going to move on to examine the cardiac system. First of all, I'm having a look at the precordium area of the uh, upper body and I'm having a look to see if there's any old scarring. I'm also having a look to see at eye level to see if there is any lifts or heaves in the precordial area. I'm having a look to see if there's any obvious apical impulse or aortic impulse. After I've had a look, I'm going to palpate uh, the precordium area. I'm going to start by having palpating in the mitral area for lifts, he heaves and thrills, which may indicate uh, pericarditis and in the aortic area here. The next thing I need to do is to find um, the point of maximum um, impulse which is the apex beat of the heart that is found at the fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line. So I need to count down five and across. So I'm having a feel here at the fifth intercostal space to see to see if I can feel for the apical impulse. If I can't feel it there, I'm going to ask my patient to roll over onto the left hand side. Okay, which should bring the apex of the heart closer to the chest wall so that I can feel the apical impulse there, which I can very clearly. That indicates to me that the heart is not enlarged. If you'd like to move back onto your back now. Once I've located the point of maximum impulse, which is just here, I can move on to auscultate the heart for heart sounds. I'm going to be auscultating with the diaphragm of the stethoscope first of all, and then I'm going to be auscultating with the bell of the, of the stethoscope. The diaphragm of the, uh, the stethoscope will pick up the higher pitched heart sounds and the bell of the stethoscope will pick up the lower heart sounds. I'm going to start in the aortic area, listening to several cycles of the cardiac cycle as I go down. Now I'm in the pulmonic area, now I'm listening down the left sternal border to the mitral area which is between the fourth and the fifth intercostal space. To complete this examination there are two special manoeuvres that we need to perform. First of all I'm going to ask Daniel to roll onto the left hand side and then I'm going to listen with the bell of the stethoscope over the apex 
of the heart, listening here for any mitral regurgitation or mitral stenosis. Okay, if you'd just like to listen, lie back for me. Okay, now if you could sit up for me, Daniel, please. Okay, and I'd like you to just lean forward slightly for me. Exhale and hold your breath. Now I'm going to listen with the diaphragm of the stethoscope over the mitral area and now along the left sternal border. You need to breathe out again and breathe again and then hold your breath again. And here I'm listening here for aortic regurgitation or aortic stenosis. Now we're going to move on to the assessment of the lower limbs. First of all, I'm going to have a look at the ankles to check for any um, ankle edema that may indicate signs of heart failure. And next I'm going to have a look at the hair distribution on the lower limbs. Um, lack of hair distribution on the lower limbs uh, may indicate uh, vascular disease. Also having a look at the condition of the lower limbs to have a look for things like cellulitis or varicose veins or leg ulcers. I'm now going to check uh, the lower limb pulses. So I'm going to check for dorsalis pedis. Okay, I'm going to check for the posterior tibial pulse. And I'm going to check for the popliteal pulse. If you just bend your legs slightly for me, please, uh, Daniel. And I'm going to check under here for the popliteal pulse. Okay, that's all fine. Pop your leg down. And that concludes our physical examination of the cardiovascular system. So thank you very much, Daniel. Thanks. You can get dressed now. Thank you. So to summarise, we've done a general inspection of our patient. We've done an examination of the peripheral vascular system and we've done an examination of the cardiac system. We strongly recommend that if you want to practice, you need to get yourself a mentor and we provided some further reading for you. And thank you very much for joining me.